So we're talking about Waste Paper, a, a live-action animated uh, short film. Um, this is an interesting uh, short film. Um, who came up with this concept? I mean, where did it come from? Okay. I can do that. <laughs> ah. Hi, my name is Derek Pete. I'm a writer-director. So uh, we came up with this concept actually quite a while ago. It was actually a feature uh, screenplay when I was in UCLA's film school. And it's one of those ideas that I just never, it just wouldn't let me uh, go. And uh, 10 years later, actually, I was like, hmm, I should dust that off and see what it would, what it would look like. And so um, we uh, kind of readapted the script for, for, for short. And uh, basically the idea came really from uh, the notion, I was a big fan of cartoons, still, still am a big fan. Um, I, I'm always looking at the uh, Cartoon Network, and <laughs> which is, I don't know, it's just what I do. But uh, and I was looking at it one day and I was like, you know, where's Bugs Bunny and Fred Flintstone and, you know, all these, you know, they were replaced by like South Park and, you know, and all these really kind of mean cartoons. <laughs> So I was like, did, did they just die off or whatever? Uh, and so that was the basis of the idea. And it just went from there. And over time, it became more than just that. But it just it became uh, really the idea of creator and creation, uh, what happens when you feel like you're tossed or you're thrown away. Um, and so uh, that's what became the idea of Waste Paper. So uh, that's pretty much how it uh, came about. <laughs> Now, for the actors, um, what, uh, why, why was this movie appealing? I'm certainly, you know, you're you're kind of playing a live action, uh, animated, you know, of a of a, you know, basically an art piece and a piece of paper that's thrown away. I mean, could you talk? Could, could you guys talk more about uh, what's the attraction to this? Thank you. Well, my name is Doris uh, Morgado, and I play Desma Normal. And for me, what really attracted me about this film was the message uh, about just having self-worth and finding yourself, because that's what the characters are all struggling with at the end, is, is not to be forgotten and not to be um, thrown away in life um, or by someone else that you love and look, and look up to and admire. And I, too, love cartoons. Mm -hmm. So that was another great thing about this film, that it just brought that like nice childhood memory of like bringing, bringing a, an adult, uh, a cartoon for the adult world. But definitely the message to me was, was the high point for this. Um, hi, I'm Mikey Selkin, and I play Owiti. And um, yeah, I mean, Right off the bat, you said it, live action uh, as well as animation. That's a great selling point to me to be able to be part of this. And then the message of the movie was great. You know, for me to be able to play a, the leader of this band of misfits that get tossed away and then to, you know, have this uplifting message at the end of try to get them out and you're more than this and you're better than this really spoke to me. I really like that. And then just working off these great actors that came and this great director and script. Um, it was a uh, it was a match made in heaven for me. It was perfect, you know. I really enjoyed it. Uh, I'm Miguel Sagas. I play animator and Chancellor Mott. And for me, honestly, the love began with a script because first of all, as an actor, uh, getting offered the possibility to audition and after being cast as the bad guy or the evil guy in that way was a very interesting challenge for me I, in the way I would approach the role. Um, and the meaning was fantastic because I didn't approach the role in an evil way as the bad guy who's going to kill anyone or it wasn't that. It was more of a, an inner voice. It was more of a conscience thing. It was something that I approached as we've all felt like we're not um, worth it and we've all felt like we're part of the trash sometimes and to realize that the only one who's able to change that reality is yourself no matter what people say or make you feel was a super interesting layer to this role so uh, I was attracted to you know not only the script but after I met with Derek and the entire team was just incredible and I really feel like we became a little family which was great yeah. you know Cool. I just want, just to piggyback on, I mean, one of the interesting things about um, 
uh, Miguel's role in, as the inner voice of the animator. Um, it's without without that voice telling the character, "Oh, you're a bad idea. You're you know ill-conceived. You're worthless." Um, he really wouldn't have g achieved what his true potential was. So, even though they're you know adversaries, they they really need each other. I mean, he needed him to 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 push him to the next level. So that's. That was the kind of the interesting uh, interplay that we had. Um, so yes, he is the villain, and he does it really well. <laughs> but uh, but uh, but at the end, you realize that he needed him to get to the next level. So it's cool. Miguel, how how did it feel to play two different characters in the film? I mean, technically, I guess it's almost like both of them were kind of villains in the, in their own way. Well, the animator for me was kind of the creative mind. So it's the process that I feel like as actors and as artists, we're, we're all encountered at some point where you, whether you're drawing, in this case, the animator is creating these characters or as actors, you create roles. For me, that was more of a simple fact. Uh, the, the challenge and the interesting layer was the inner voice. It was the chancellor mod. It was this political figure. It was this unconscious. It was this uh, judge, you know, it was this feeling of you're not worth it. And as you said, without this voice, without this little thing telling you you can't do it, then there's no way we could have made a difference, no? As no. characters and as people, mm -hmm. so, yeah. I would figure one of the most difficult things about working on a live action anim animation is that you're not, the, the setting and what you're looking at, it's not really there. Can you folks talk about uh, um, how this is difficult, or maybe his, his direction was just perfect for you guys? Is that what's going on? Well, um, I remember there was one scene, and I think it's, it's in the film, and quite personally, it was one of my favorites because it just had, wow, that was, I'm guessing you guys picked that up. Um, it was a very beautiful scene, and we're looking at the possibility of what can change. Mm -hmm. And it was very interesting because it had to be just perfect for the eye line because something, we were looking at something specifically. And I remember that night, I think they had like eight different types of dots and every, they would have us do, okay, now you look over here, Mikey, you look over there, nope. And then they would kept, kept switching it yeah. around just to make sure that where the camera angle was, it looked like we were both looking at the same thing, even though we weren't. So I, I thought that was like really interesting um, because it turned out beautiful. I mean, I saw the screenshots of it and it was <laughs> one of my favorite ones. Um, so yeah, it was, it was fun. Yeah, it was definitely fun. Um, there were definitely some challenging moments of it too, uh, as Doris was saying, like just looking at a, a dot or whatever, and you're like, all right, what am I looking at exactly? But, um, but that actually made it fun to a certain degree because then you're like, all right, I really have to focus on what I'm doing. And you know, um, you really get to create in your mind a lot of these things. And, and you know, that's what actors really love to do is to create it. and these characters in this whole world and to have it laid out for us. Then we're like, all right, all right, we see it. And you know, now to be able to see it on the big screen is gonna be even better. But um, it was definitely uh, well worth it. And we did get great direction from Derek to tell us what we were doing. And um, some of the, the, the funnest moments, I think, came out of that, the green screen and trying to figure out where things were and how it would look. And um, yeah, that's, that's uh, the challenge, but also the, the joy that came with it as well. Just to piggyback on that, to me, it was one of the most technical projects I've been on. Mm -hmm. But I feel like we got inside your mind Derek because yeah. without it's that dangerous. yeah but it was true like without that direction without that mind guiding us through what was going on inside you know your mind and your heart it would have been just too technical because it was there were times that we were shooting for three hours and I don't know if there's this scene in it but I remember there was a crow flying around me and I had to see the crow and like all the you know and it's probably I don't know if it's there or not but it was just a very technical <laughs> I just wanted to piggyback what you're saying I mean it's so funny because like probably I would Probably 40, 50 percent of this was just acting to nothing <laughs> and looking at a you know either a white wall or a black wall <laughs> or a green screen or you know a lot of these actors had to just basically act to nothing. And one thing I wanted to say um, uh, to that, uh, you know, we talked about the technical aspects. We had a great uh, visual effects supervisor on our film. Uh, his name is Richard, is Richard Kidd. He's the visual effect 
supervisor on films like uh, Transformers and Twilight and Spider-Man 3. And it was just a luck and circumstance that brought us together. And, and he was on the, on the set the entire time we were shooting. And he basically guided us through the whole process. And we also had a great team um, at Digital Sandbox, which is uh, a company that uh, was responsible for Babe uh, back in the day, which was off obviously a favorite you know, it won the Oscar, you know, oh, so, but list. yes, <laughs> and so we had a great, great, great behind the scenes technical crew to help us kind of bring this world to life, and so it, they're, they're saying I had, you know, gave them great direction, but it was because I had such great support to help me figure out kind of, you know, you know, should we shoot this on a white psych or should we shoot this on a green screen? They're like, no, you got to shoot it on white because it's going to end up white, so don't do that, you know, so they were giving me, like, pointers, and so we were able to, to kind of uh, march our way through it, and a lot of times, Mikey in particular, uh, was, there's, he'll see, you know, the, he's acting to a character that's supposed to be coming out of a tree and all this, it's like, and he's like, okay, sure. <laughs> That's if you say so. <laughs> you know, so anyway, it was, it was a lot of fun to do. It's a lot of fun. Who did the hand drawings um, for, for the film, and did the actors get to keep them as souvenirs? <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's another great person. Uh, one of the team members, uh, Christina Oboda. Uh, she's actually uh, she was a production designer on the uh, film. She came on the project early on. She was one of the first folks that uh, joined, um, and she just jumped in with both feet. She just she loved the concept. She was inspired by it, and she came up with a lot of the uh, the look and feel. Not a lot. I mean, she she created it. <laughs> uh, we you know we had great conversations about kind of what we were, um, were uh, our approach to it. And she had a very interesting take that I, I responded to in uh, instantly in terms of as, the, as they progress through this world, it starts off pretty bare. And then little by little, you see objects that are coming together uh, as, as we get closer and closer to the to the mind of the animator so and she introduced this whole dragon concept so there's dragons everywhere so uh, you have to look you have to look for them they're they're hidden uh, throughout and so uh, but for her the dragon uh, represented a kind of almost like a religious symbol um, and it and you know I did my research on it and found that, that you know it's it's like the watchman the the, the watch the watch men or the you know over the over the empire or whatever so it was an interesting symbol for for the film and and it's it's replicated throughout uh throughout the uh, entire piece so anyway Kristina, she's awesome she's been the sundance with other films that she's production design she's she's the she's the great she's the great one <laughs> and no no souvenirs yet we did no we did not. no no we didn't and i really wanted some of those miniature sets that they had i mean they were amazing so <laughs> i was hoping miguel was going to keep his um, his throne. My throne. Oh, I had a pretty oh, yeah, there was a great throne. throne. It was. Yeah. Yeah. There was the, I mean, the deck. Hint, yeah. hint, Derek. Like deco <laughs> in my apartment. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say I didn't get the, I didn't even, I didn't get one of those drawings either. So I'm in the same boat as uh, as they are. We uh, she created like uh, 20 or 30 just so we'd have enough for takes. And when it was over, they they kind of disappeared. Um. <laughs> I don't know. We'll have to ask her today. She's coming. So. Perfect. Okay. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. That that's too bad. So now now I'm imagining that all these sketch drawings is in an actual waste paper basket <laughs> at this time, right? <laughs> So anyways, can you guys talk about your upcoming projects that you may have? Uh, well, I actually have a couple coming out. Um, I just shot a film on, in Ohio with uh, John Travolta, and that should be coming out sometime at the end of um, next year. And then I have another film called Black Hats. It's going to be premiering in the Austin uh, Film Festival in August 16th. So very excited about that one. Cool. Mm. Um, we'll actually start, we'll go into production hopefully at the end of June for a new film I'm shooting. It's about a group of friends who are um, kind of getting, trying to be adults really. And uh, yeah, it should be a fun project to play a photographer in that. And um, then also I just finished up a pilot that hopefully uh, is about to get picked up. and. Uh, and then I also have another film in this film festival, um, but we won't talk about that right now. <laughs> Very cool. 
Uh, I'm looking for a job. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> well, we're all looking for a job. Oh. No, I'm actually producing and developing a television show, which I'm excited about. I'm part of the writing team and obviously the actors. Um, can't say much yet, but it's based on Latin American characters in the United States to throw a little bit of all the flavors that we are, because I don't think that we're still represented to a full extent. Mm -hmm. uh, Hollywood, the industry in itself, we're still very, it's a very small percentage. We're represented as a stereotype and uh, my team and I kind of want to write about it and stop waiting for a role to come to us and actually put a voice to that. So I'm excited about that and hopefully we'll see the light. Cool. No, that's exciting. Everything is great. I'm all in on this, uh, on this project. We are, you know, going to different cities uh, presenting the film. Uh, we uh, have a feature of this, a feature script of this uh, short, and so we're just going to be knocking on every door we can find to introduce it to, to as many producers as we can. Just, you know, we'd love to see it obviously on the big screen uh, as a feature uh, film. Uh, also, I've written some, uh, uh, I have written a, a pilot uh, for, of another uh, uh, project that I'm working on uh, in the superhero world um, and um, and also trying to do f you know sell scripts you know the, you know the, the regular stuff as a writer director that you do just <laughs> hawking your wares wherever you can and uh, and you know moving the ball on every project you can to the next level and obviously hoping that we get to work together again yeah. very 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 soon obviously yes yes Oh, hey, thank you for this conversation. I was going to ask whether there was a, a plan for a feature film, and it sounds like everybody here wants to do it some, someday. I mean, there's a couple, a couple avenues that we're thinking about, not just the, the feature version, that obviously is uh, the goal, but also as a, a video game, we've got some interest in that, in that uh, space. And also, yeah, and also we're thinking about approaching, uh, you know, I don't know, 3M or Kimberly Clark or, you know, Procter & Gamble, you know, maybe they have some millions to throw. It's, a, you know, it's a movie about paper, you know, so Dang. why not, you know? So we've got some tricks up our sleeves, how we promote it and how we try to get some financing for the feature so we're we're looking forward to the process and this is where it starts world premiere Yay. dances with films and we're excited so thanks <laughs>